Alrighty, so in this video, we're going to be talking about Figma, what it is, and how we're going to be using it, and we're going to just set up the basics of our project. So first, what is Figma? So this is a tool for web designers that allows them to create mockups and prototypes of websites, including all image and icon assets, as well as colors and layout positioning. As someone with years of graphic design experience, specifically working with layout and design, I can appreciate the connection between design and development that Figma allows for. So I'm going to start by sharing a resource within the course. I'm not going to go hugely in depth on this, but feel free to read about it at your leisure. The fundamental things that you need to know is that it works similar to Photoshop in that you have layers and each of these layers can have their own styling. In this case, it actually allows you as a designer to set the CSS values for how it should be positioned on the page. And that's something we're gonna look at as well. And the other main thing that is important is that it allows us to have shared styles so we can get the color styles from Figma as well. And also, the important thing is exporting image assets. So we'll get to this part later on in the next video. All right, let's get started with our specific Figma project. I will also provide this link to the project. It is called landing page. It looks like this. And when you go to this link, you'll be greeted with this if you've never gone to Figma before. The first thing you're going to need to do is log in in order to complete the handoff between the designer and the developer. So first we're gonna log in. I've already created my account. You can log in with Google. And once you do that, we can actually close this one for now. Once you do that, you can see that we have our landing page here. And as I hover over it, you can see that we have different layers, different assets happening here. I'm actually just gonna zoom in to make this a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna do 150%. And then I want to make this fit within the page so I can actually use a keyboard shortcut in Figma. So I'm just gonna press Shift and one. And now you can see that it's zoomed to fit. All right, awesome. So once you've logged in, this is all the work that the designer has done. And essentially all we're trying to do is recreate this in our code. So the first thing you might notice on the left side here, we have a landing page. When I click on it, this is our landing page layer, which is everything. You can see that we have some CSS over here, including a background linear gradient. If I collapse this, we can actually see that it's made up of a bunch of different layers. So you can see we have our main image, we have our branding, we have all of our other images here at the bottom, and we have our app store badges here, and then we have our text here as well. All right, so that's generally how everything's gonna be laid out as you click on them you'll be able to export individual layers. But again, we'll get to that in the next video. So we're gonna go back to clicking on the landing page, and this is the first styling we're gonna apply within our project. But first, we're gonna need to actually set up our project in Visual Studio Code. So if we go back to our desktop here, we're gonna start with the standard empty template. So I'm going to just use this, duplicate it, and then I'm gonna rename it splash dash page. And then I'm gonna open this up in Visual Studio Code. Okay, so we have our files open here. Perfect. All right, let's start with the usual. We're gonna change our title here to be splash page. And we can save that and then run our project. All right, so it's working, that's great. Now we can go back to our HTML and the first thing we're going to do is we're actually gonna create a wrapper div for everything. This is because we want the wrapper to be the 1440 pixels and we want that to be able to be centered in the body because some screens will actually be wider than 1440 pixels. So if you have a 1080p monitor, that width is actually 1920 instead of 1440. So to create a div with the class wrapper in Visual Studio Code, we can actually just type period and then wrapper 
So that's the class, and then press enter. And you see we have a div with the class of wrapper. Very cool. Okay, so we can save that. And if we jump back to Figma here, we can see that we have some styling suggestions here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna copy the background first, and we're going to put that in our body itself actually. And we can get rid of this min height because we're gonna deal with that later. And then we also want to style for our wrapper itself. And we'll jump back to the browser and we're gonna copy the position relative and the width, but we're not gonna copy the height because we want the height to be a little bit more dynamic than that. So we're gonna paste that in there. So we have our position relative and we have our width of 1440 pixels. And instead of our solid height, we're gonna have a more dynamic height. So we're gonna give it a min height of 100 viewport height. So this is taking up 100% of the screen real estate that's visible. If you increase the number more than that, it means you'll actually scroll down the page, which we will actually need to do later. And next, we're gonna give this a margin of auto. So this is going to center our wrapper within our page if our page happens to be wider than 1440 pixels. And I'm just gonna give it a background of Dodger Blue now so you can see what I'm talking about. So we can save that now and jump back. Okay, so we can see definitely a lot of blue happening here. But if we actually zoom out, we can see that we have our gradient background. It's very subtle, but there's a little bit of pink down here. And this is showing that our wrapper will remain centered even if the page is bigger than our 1440 pixels. So that's why we're using a wrapper here. All right, so I can set that zoom back to 100%. All right, now we're ready to start with the text for our project. So back in Figma, we can see that we have a title here and we have some body text down here. So the first thing we're gonna do is if we click on the title, we can see that we have a font family of Futura PT. So I personally know that this is a paid font and we wanna stick with free fonts for our project. So I'm gonna be changing this to Lato instead. So I'm gonna jump over to Google Fonts in order to do that. You can choose a different font if you like. To me, this is a similar, very popular font. So I'm just gonna search Lato, L-A-T-O, and I'm gonna click on it, and I'm gonna scroll down, and I'm gonna select the regular font. I'm gonna go over to Embed, and I wanna copy the import statement. So I'm gonna highlight that copy that, jump back, and I'm gonna paste that at the top, the CSS here. And then I'm also going to, in the body, assign the font family to be Lado, comma, sans serif as a backup, just in case that doesn't load. Now we're gonna to need to build out the HTML with the font from our Figma project. So first we will build out the text here. So we want our title and text, comment out a title there. And then we're gonna create a parent container because we're also gonna put in the app store badges in here as well. So we're just gonna use dot text dash container to create our div. And then inside of this, we're gonna create an h1 dot title to specify this is our title class. And then we're gonna create a paragraph element, so p dot text. So to give that a class of text. And then we're gonna jump back to the browser. We can close our Google fonts for now and go back to Figma. And we wanna actually copy the text. So we can just copy this right here and then jump back. And we're gonna put that in the title there. And then we're gonna highlight this and we're gonna copy the text here. And we can jump back, paste that in. Okay, I'm gonna use Alt-Z to word wrap so that we can actually see everything. That reminds me, we can actually get rid of Font Awesome. We don't need that for this project. Okay, and so we have our HTML done here. Let's uh, save that and check it out. Okay, so we have our font in here and we have our 
Google font, so that's good. We can see that we now have a horizontal scroll bar though, and that's definitely something that I don't wanna have. I think that's usually a bad thing to have. So we can fix that by switching our overflow X on the body to be hidden. So we'll go back to our CSS here and below our margin, we're gonna type overflow dash X. So this is only for left, right, and we want that to be hidden. Okay, we can save that and check. All right, perfect. We got rid of our horizontal scroll bar at the bottom here. So we still have margin above our H1, as you can see, there's a bit of white here, but let's copy the styling from Figma first to see what changes. So back in Figma, I'm gonna go over to our title again, and I'm gonna copy all of this, but I am gonna get rid of that specific font family. I'm gonna copy the color, but I'm gonna copy that separately because I'm gonna put that in the body instead of having to have it in both of them. So we're gonna go right below here, and we're gonna have a class for our title, and I'm gonna paste that in. I'm gonna highlight all of these, press tab so that it's indented properly, and I'm gonna get rid of this font family here. And I'm gonna go back to Figma to copy the color here. And we're gonna paste that right here above our background color. Okay. Then I'm going to go back and copy the CSS for our body text here. So you can see that we have a position of absolute, so that is setting exactly where they want it on the page. So that's why having our wrapper be 1440 pixels is so important, because all of this is relative to that 1440 pixel width. Okay, and we'll jump back, and below this, we're gonna use our text class here, and we're gonna paste this. Same thing, we're just gonna highlight this, tab it over, and then remove our font family. And we can save that now and check it out. Okay, so that's definitely looking a lot better. It is exactly where it should be on the page. So you can see if we go back that we have a gap here and we have a gap here on the top, which we are maintaining. Perfect, so our positioning is working out and copying over our CSS is going pretty smoothly so far. I can actually get rid of the background Dodger blue that was just to show how the wrapper will remain centered on the page. Okay, cool. In the next video, now that we have our position where we want it to be, we're gonna be starting to tackle the image assets. So I'll see you in that one. Bye for now.